for those unaware of what's happening, uh, I made a video recently about Big Mama Eternals for a high school show series thing that she's been putting on uh, YouTube. And uh, she had, when, when I recorded that episode, there was two episodes that she had recorded for Fernie High School. And this is the second one. We're going to be talking about the second one. And just like last time, I want to remind everyone that I am an experienced writer. I've been, I've, I wrote a lot of books. So I, I have a lot of writing experience. So I do feel that it's fair for me to critique this show or this series or whatever that Big Mom Eternal is trying to create. And uh, with that said, let's jump into it and talk about Fernie High School and my thoughts on the uh, second episode. Now we are under the impression you have been teaching inappropriate matters, Miss Balls. Well, I was only teaching the wonderful world of donut sausage. Yes, <laughs> it appears you are missing a chromosome like the rest of the school facility. That is good. Wow, she just like gosh, she can stay. Not so fast. So it's kind of it's kind of fine up to this point, but this is when I start to have something that I want to talk about. Uh, the board members, uh, first off, the first one, the, the bunny character, is definitely Big Mom Eternal. If not, they definitely need to, like, like, fill in for her when she's sick or something, because that sounds exactly like her. They obviously, like, tried to make the voice a little bit different, but it sounds just like her, so that's a very obvious thing. This, to me, feels more like you ran out of people to use, and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just something that I thought I would point out, because it's it felt really weird to just, like... You know, going into it for the first time, it felt weird to, to hear her voice and a different character. Um, but besides that, I want to talk about the other board members. They all sound like the same person too, kind of. There's something a little bit weird about those other characters and the way they talk and everything like that. It all sounds like very, very young children trying to sound like adults, but also with different accents. One of them tries to seemingly sound country, while the other one seemingly s tries to sound uh, more sophisticated. Uh, but they're all, they all have like a very, very young voice, and that's just, and none of those voices fit those characters. So it's something that I thought that I, I would mention is that m maybe try to find uh, other people that have more of an older voice, or maybe voices that would fit what you're trying to do, uh, versus just grabbing whoever. Or in, in, in the case of this, you could have, you know, you know, said she was being investigated by the board members and everything like that, and then just if you didn't have the voice actors for the board members, then just not include the board members scenes and everything like that. Leave it out because it, it's it's not necessarily super important, but it's it's important in the sense that we get the idea of how she got back to the school. Because at, at the end of the episode, she doesn't get brought back to the school, but at the end of the episode, we find out that the board members decide to let her back into the school and teach again. Um, but I, I think that it's important to tell us that and show us that, but at the same time, I think that this could have been done some, something done off camera unless you happen to have the uh, just better voice actors or, or someone better to fill out those voices because it just felt so odd to me and it's something that I wanted to mention. It's kind of a petty, like little nitpicky kind of thing, I will admit, but it is something that felt very off and very weird watching for the first time. Oh, something else. Something else I want to mention too. Uh, the not so fast thing at the end. Uh, <laughs> That sounded terrible. The line wasn't delivered very well, and it also felt very off. It just didn't. It just didn't feel like a real thing that the person was saying. I will also say that the cut that suddenly happens there is a little bit weird as well. Um, there's all kinds of like weird cuts in this in this episode, or at least. It, they seem poorly timed, or the way that it cuts is it feels a little bit weird. I don't know what it is about the cuts, but the cuts are a little bit weird. Wow. That guy is pretty cute. Maybe I can convince him to give me good grade. Don't you think he looks a little bit, like, toxic? Well, I do have a type. <laughs> Let's just- So, for this, this part was a little bit weird to me, too. And I, I hope there's, like, a bigger meaning behind why she said that. For both of them, really, because this uh was uh, this she says that uh her or nicole's friend says that uh toxic looks like the teacher and vice versa and the other character says that she does have a type um that's that's it's fine to say that kind of i guess it's a little bit weird i guess because she's obviously a teenage like a teenager and everything she's definitely a kid so that's just weird in of itself but the fact that it's brought up makes it seem more like you're trying to foreshadow that they're related somehow like uh, a toxic is going to be related to the uh teacher in some way and i think that would, i think that would be an excellent thing to include in maybe the next episode or some episode down the line that you find out that they're related in some way maybe that's his uh stepfather or well no i guess stepfather wouldn't make sense but maybe you find out that that's his brother or, or his father or something like that 
something. Um, because it feels like that is important in some way. I don't quite understand it, but I, I digress. It just, it's just something I wanted to mention that it sounds like that's important, but there's nothing delivered on that later on. So it almost feels like an empty promise in a way. Just, it was a little bit weird because these are kids trying to get with the teacher and that's just so weird. That's very, very weird. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like it just, just because of how weird that is. <clears throat> the sub maybe? Who's this pretty girl? <gasps> I should have been- That was a little bit weird. It's not necessarily weird in the sense that the teacher was like being a creep and everything like that because that's the point of the episode is that the teacher is a creep and everything like that and they try and expose him and all that. But uh, it's weird in the sense that he went up there, said that to Eternal, and then we cut back to Nicole and everything like that without Eternal reacting in any way at all. She should have had some form of reaction, even something like a nervous laughter or something like a, uh, 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 that sort of thing, like she does kind of later. Uh, some kind of reaction before we go to Nicole saying that, what she says. It just, it just feels weird that she doesn't react to that at all. I also like the dialogue that you did between Nicole and her friend. I, I really love the, 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 uh, the dialogue and interaction that those two characters had, especially, like, it's a little bit weird that she wants to get with the teacher or whatever like that, but, but aside from that, which is weird, I will admit, but aside from that, the dialogue itself is good. But this, the, the fact that Eternal just didn't react at all to this sub acting this way, right then and there, was a little bit weird. You could have, you know, had them, had Eternal react in some way and then cut to Nicole doing this when saying what she's saying. In the outdated clothing and the headset. I will be your very special friend. <laughs> Me too. Wait, what? I had someone else in. Okay, that that part. Who who said me too? Who said me too? And then why did you cut to Dax saying, "Wait, what?" Was Dax the one saying me too? And then like immediately retracting what he said by saying, "Wait, what?" Uh, that those two lines were. They weren't necessarily unnecessary, but they. We didn't get to see who said it, or why they said it, or anything like that. And, and then you see Dax, and you see him say, wait, what? As if he was the one that maybe said it, or maybe someone that he knows really well, and, and maybe has a crush on or something said that. I, I don't know why he said, wait, what? And I don't know who said, me too. Also, I don't know why the other person said, me too, but... I, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's really weird to me. That's just very weird to me that we don't get to see who said that. And there wasn't like a zoom in on a character to say it. It kind of had most of the class and the image uh, or the, the, the shot. So you couldn't really tell who was saying what. <laughs> Why? Who said that? I don't, that's just something that it, to me, it confuses me and it kind of puts me out of the, the show a little bit. It kind of, it kind of breaks the immersion, so to speak. And suddenly I'm, I'm starting to question like, wait, who said that? What's going on? You know, that sort of thing. Money and mouth to go around. After all, I did get promoted at the butchers. Did you say bu butchers? Okay, that part was a little bit weird to me because you had, uh, you know, the teachers say I did get promoted at the butchers. That's fine. That's a fine line. But then you cut to Dax saying, um, did you say, but, and then it just cuts away from him and goes to Toxic. And then you see Toxic's reaction to uh, this whole situation. He says essentially what you would expect, um, not, not not what you would expect him to say, but what you um, thought Dax was going to say. He basically picks up where Dax left off or continues where Dax probably was going to continue from. Okay, so this part, to me, it felt like you had Toxic originally meant to say, wait, did you say Butcher? And then continue on his dialogue from there. But you decided to give Dax another line, so you try to introduce that, and then you decided that that didn't work, or something happened somewhere when in the uh, whole uh, like uh, creation process, editing process, that his line was either forgotten that was in the final product, or some something happened. I don't know what happened, but his line was clearly interrupted in a in a very unrealistic way, in a very strange way, or maybe it was intended for him to interrupt what Dax was saying or something. I don't really know, but. Dax seems like a very strange character in this episode because there's this is like the second or third mistake that's happened with this character. Uh, earlier he said, wait, what? For some reason, I don't, it's still unclear on that. But now he's seemingly saying other people's lines and then getting cut off uh, for that person to say what the line's supposed to be. I don't know what's going on with that, but that should have been something that was cut. You should have either cut Dax's um, line of like how he was trying to say, wait, did you say butchers? You should have just cut that line all together instead of having Toxic step in halfway through. Um, again, I don't know if that was some kind of editing mistake or what, but it, it feels it feels like it is, so I don't know. It was, it's just weird. It doesn't make so much sense to me, but anyway, continuing on. 
That's just... Oh, did I say butcher? I meant farm. <laughs> so who wants money? Okay, so his joke about did I say the butchers? I meant farm. I I don't know what I don't know what the punchline. I don't know what the joke is here. I don't know what the joke is here, and I guess the point of it is like he was trying to be funny, but clearly it wasn't funny, and that's the joke itself is that he couldn't be funny, and that's why we see the the the, the pan over the classroom, which is a beautiful shot by the way, with the cricket noises and everything like that. Which the cricket noise thing is 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 fine, but it's it's sort of cliche. But his joke overall, it didn't. I don't I don't know why he's trying to justify working at the butchers by saying that he works at the farm instead and i don't understand the point of like what's the big deal that he worked at the butchers before what's the what's the beef there so to speak why is why is everyone so put off about about the fact that he works at a butcher or worked at a butcher at some point what why why does he feel the need to try to change what he said by saying farm instead i don't i don't quite understand that there's no point for the students to freak out about the fact that he works at a butcher I guess since they're animals, I guess that kind of makes sense, but uh, I don't know. Either This is really creepy. Well, obviously he's a creep. He's hidden on kids. <laughs> Toxic is able to actually stand up from his desk, walk over uh, to the desk in front of him and talk to Eternal and her friend and literally about the teacher itself, himself. Like he's literally talking about the teacher and the teacher doesn't do anything. The teacher doesn't, you know, address the fact that he's, that this student stood up from his chair or whatever and, and got up. This could have been a great way for uh, you to show how the teacher hates all the guys in the class and only likes the women in the class. This could have been a way to add on to his creep factor by like picking on him for you know, doing something and maybe braiding him a little bit further than what he should have. Maybe you could have done something like that with a Dax as well. But the fact that he's able to just stand up in the middle of class and walk over to Eternal, even though it's one desk in front, it's still a very weird thing. It's not very believable. Also, while all this is happening, the teacher isn't saying anything. They're not doing anything. They're just kind of mute and uh, still. In the last episode, the the teacher, while all the other students were kind of you know talking to each other, that happens and that happens in class. That's a real thing. You know, they kind of whisper to each other and kind of talk to each other and everything like that. And they're not always caught, but this guy's just straight up standing and walking across the, walking to the next table. But the teacher was still talking in the background and everything like that. And you didn't do that for this episode, and I'm not sure why. Take your spinal fluid. Well, I am astonished. Let's go. So this is my final critique of the show uh, series over here. It's a little bit unclear why these three are in the principal's office. I assume what happened is the teacher must have told the principal that these three students were threatening him or something to that effect must have happened. And that's what brought them into the principal's office because it's not necessarily clear. Like you just kind of cut to the lunchroom and everything like that. There's some people here. He, and then it just cuts to them asking why he's asking why they're threatening the substitute teacher and everything like that and it's unclear why they're there how they got there i mean i, I assume they're there because clearly had to have been told or found out somehow something must have happened but uh what happens here essentially is that he pro they prove that you know he threatened them and everything like that and his line my, my dear old principal my whole my god my principal <laughs> He he delivered a line so poorly here. I don't really know how to say it. He just goes, well, I am astonished. Let's go. Honestly, honestly, I cannot tell if it was his acting there, if it was the line he had to say or what happened. Uh, maybe it was some kind of thing in editing because he says a line and they immediately cut to them halfway out the door where he basically is like, let's go. And it cuts immediately to them halfway out the door. Maybe it was the cut. Maybe it was his acting was a little bit different that day. Uh, maybe it was the lines he had to say. I'm not really sure. Maybe expand on the dialogue that he had to have said and maybe that would have made it a little bit better. Maybe it would have been like, oh my god, I, I can't believe this or something like that instead of, well, I'm astonished. I, it may, to me, it feels like it's his dialogue that, that is making it feel like the performance isn't good. I, I, don't, I really can't say what's wrong with this. I, I think maybe could have tweaked the way he said it or you know maybe try to make him say something else because looking at this, he says, I am astonished, let's go. And as he says, let's go, it cuts to them here instead of uh, you know him still at the desk and then he gets up and, and walks out the door with them or anything like that. It just kind of cuts immediately to this and then it kind of fades out and then back to the classroom where uh, adventures ensue from there. <laughs> it's a little bit weird to me because of how this was put together. This goes back to how I was saying earlier how some of the cuts feel a little bit weird or mistimed or something feels off about the cuts and stuff like that that you've done. 
uh, where you cut from scene to scene. Yeah, just th that that whole last part kind of felt a little bit weird with that, that last transition of them going to there. But essentially, that's that's it for this episode. That's all I really have to say about this second episode of the Furry High School. Uh, I won't be doing another one. I, once he makes the third one, I probably won't be making any kind of critique or review or anything like that on that. Who knows? Who knows what happens? Maybe it, maybe it will be worse than this one, which is actually, in my opinion, better than the last one. But then uh, maybe it will somehow be worse than both. Uh, or maybe it will be better than both and there wouldn't be anything worth talking about. Other than that, I don't really have anything to say apart from the themes that she seems to be going with. The themes that Big Mama Eternal seems to be going with these, these last two episodes. <laughs> I'm very concerned about this theme because the theme for both these episodes seems to be very sexual and that is very weird. Just overall the theme just feels a little bit weird because the first episode dealt with donut sausages which is very clearly a sexual thing and then the second episode is themed around this very inappropriately sexual character. Uh, not sexual character but the character being overly attracted to the minors of the the class and it's just it's a very the theme seems to be sexual and I, it's a very weird, that's very weird. Um, I, I hope that that was just a fluke and that wasn't intentional or if it was intentional that it doesn't continue to be the theme for the entire series or anything like that. You know, I'm fine with the whole like romance drama and the whole relationships drama and everything like that that you're kind of doing with Toxic and uh, Eternals rivalry with uh, Nicole and everything like that. Uh, I'm fine with that, but it gets to a point where it's like it's starting to be too sexual and it's a very, very weird thing. But other than that, other than that weird last theme critique, I am uh, impressed with how good the second episode is compared to the last one. Uh, there are a couple things that I would prefer in the last one, such as, like I said earlier, the teacher talking in the background so that the class is still technically going on. Uh, other than that, though, there's not really much else to say about it, so if you are interested in seeing more content like this, um, I'm not sure who you should subscribe to. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not, because I don't normally do reviews of other people's uh, content and everything like that, but maybe I will do more, because this was kind of fun to do both these episodes. Uh, but other than that, if you want Ponytown content, you can subscribe to Big Mama Eternal, or you can subscribe to me, because I make Ponytown content here on the channel, as well as a little bit of like random things here and there on some Fridays. Uh, like you probably saw last Friday, I did like a Call of Duty thing, but that's besides the point. That's pretty much it, that's gonna do it. Uh, stay tuned, uh, please like, subscribe, share, do those wonderful things, because when you do those wonderful things, you get access to wonderful content such as this. But that's not all you get. That's not all you get. You also get to become wonderful yourself. And I think we all want that. So do those wonderful things. And until next time, stay wonderful.